Sharpening some steel hedge trimmer blades here. This is from a steel HS81. I uh, take them off the gearbox. I've got a little video out. I say a little, it's quite long, but there's a video out showing how to remove them from the gearbox. It's quite easy, just take your gearbox casing off and then there's two two bolts here and take a couple other bits off and get your blades off. And then I'll dismantle these, clean them up and sharpen them. I like to put my blades in a vice. It uh, makes it a lot easier holding it up and taking all the nuts and bolts and spaces out. It's T27 bit and an 8mm. Try and keep these, I'll try and keep them in order as well. You've got all your bolts undone. You can spit all your blades. Off. And then what we'll do, we'll just work through them all, get them all clean, scraping all the sap off. Now I use a Chisel for getting all the all the sap off. So what I'll do now is I'll clean off all the blades, both sides. I'll use a chisel and just. Scrape off all the all the sap and rubbish and debris. So I do both sides, get them all scraped off, get it back to a flattish surface, and then I sharpen them. So I'll get all these done, get everything cleaned up. So I've got the blades all cleaned off. Now what I do is I clamp it to the to the bench, clamp one blade to the edge of the bench, so it's overhanging the bench. Set up for sharpening. What I use, I use an angle grinder, small angle, it's only a little four inch one, with a flappy sanding disc. You can use a hand file if you want to, or there's loads of die grinder, angle die grinders are good, or little, you know. Dremel multi tool, something like that. This is just what I've got at the moment. I find it works works well. So let's get set up. So when you're sharpening these, you want to get your grinder, whatever you're doing, to the same angle as the tooth is machined in the factories. I find when you initially start your grinder up or whatever you're using just do a couple of light strokes and you'll see the the colour change in the tooth and then once you, once you find the angle then it's just a question of short passes back and forward don't stay in one spot too long and just light light strokes you don't need to dig in and take it out straight away just just nice light strokes getting this radius as well in the corner make sure you you get that bit that's important as well Get your mask on and glasses.
one little tip as well is when you're coming out of your grind, don't don't lean into the tooth. So come out and away because it's very easy to round these edges off if you put too much pressure leaning that way. So when you're, especially with angle grinders, if you've got other tools, obviously it's a bit different. But certainly with angle grinders, if you're if you put pressure onto this onto the tip, it's very easy to round that off. So just be careful sort of come out and away little tip if you're new to grinding, angle grinding rather than getting your wheel flat if you concentrate on the tip just feel the feel the tip on the tooth as opposed to the, the flat bit you'll feel like you've got a bit more control if that makes sense so if you're sort of new to using grinders and stuff just concentrate on feeling where the tip is and just make strokes with the tip and then you can put a bit of lean on to get the, a bit more quicker grind. So that's one edge done. Probably can't see very well, the light's a bit rubbish. But yeah, I'll uh, flip it over, do the other side, same with the other blade. Come back to you. When you get into a good rhythm as well, you can almost just use your body to rock. Don't even move your hands, hold it into your chest wall if you're standing up those, and just become a machine. I'll try and show you what I mean. That's all your blade sharpened. Both sides. And what you want to do as well, you want to check check the back side. Make sure you've got it all. Like this one here. That's all rounded off there. Quite hard to pick up. That side looks good, but then you can see that's not far enough. Well, I hope you can anyway. Where is it? There it is. So I'll give that one another sharpen. So you just check. They should all have a nice little bar. Now both sides are sharpened, now it's time to clean up your burrs, if you can see that hopefully. So what I do, turn it upside down and I'll get a, a stone, quite a rough quick bit of water and then Work it along the blades.
do a light bit on the front as well. More so the middle of the front, I'm not too worried about the tops of the teeth. What that does, it makes, try and makes these surfaces as flat as possible. Because the tighter these blades fit together, the, the flatter they are, the better it's going to work. Some people use grinders and stuff when they're grinding off this bit, oh, I'm not a fan of that. I did uh, used to use a orbital sander with a really, really fine, fine grit. But uh, yeah, now we stick to a stone now. Less, less aggressive and you know you're keeping this relatively factory where you start getting in with a grinder with a whatever it's uh, it's it's risky so this is the safest way of cleaning them up in my opinion anyway and if you've got any any little bars left you can just uh, run a bit of sandpaper Run it on the same angle. Helps getting these birds off, really. So if you've got one of these older style blades, it's a good idea to clean up these big washers. The newer ones have got a big friction plate that runs all the way along the, the back where these older ones they just had and these washers so just give you can see how it's worn there so just give that a clean up again I'll just put it on my stone and just And also, if your uh, little spaces are knackered, these are a bit worn, but this is just my spare set of blades now, so I'm not too overly worried. But if they are worn and really small, just get some new ones. It's quite easy to find the parts online for those. What I, what I do as well is I uh, like to keep my box in order. Remember the first time I took one of these apart and I uh, just chucked the bolts in any old way. And there's different size, different size bits. Some have got smaller ones, and so yeah, just uh, something to bear in mind when you take it apart. It does make it a lot easier when you're putting it all back together when you when you know exactly which one goes where. So now you've got everything clean. All the bits ready to go back together. This is how I do it. I lay everything upside down, so to speak. Give each. layer of spray WD-40 or something and you can see my uh, end bit broke off on my friction plate if, if this wasn't a spare I'd probably get a new one for this but it should be fine put that on try and line up all the holes It's not coming out. And 
this one. Before you put that on, you need to get your spacers in. So these are ones for the end. Get it in space. The three big ones, the three big spaces are the ones that go the three end bolts or screws or whatever. Work your way along, getting them all back in. Now, what we need to do is carefully lift it up and turn it over. This is the, the awkward bit, you want to kind of keep try and keep it all together. So it's just to grab your main big section with the safety guard here and then just flip it up and hold it in place and then just start getting a couple of nuts on the end. Tighten them all down. Use my clamp again here. back together nice and sharp and should be nice and free as well and you've just got to put them back on obviously this is my spare set so these bolts will stay on and that'll be ready for any emergencies if I destroy a tooth on the other set. <laughs> but uh, yeah, any questions? Let me know. Always, uh, always trying to help people and always trying to learn from people as well. So if anyone's got any good tips, drop them in the comments and let's try and help each other out. Thanks for watching.